Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is good that we've gathered together for worship this morning here on Sunday, October the 11th at Unity Presbyterian Church. I welcome you as you join us for worship today as we live premiere this service at 11 a.m. both on Facebook and on YouTube. Hope that you'll take a moment if you're able and let us know that you're here. Uh, speak to one another through the uh, comment sections or with emojis, particularly try to greet guests and visitors who you see come across your screen as well, that this might truly be an online opportunity for live interactive worship together. We know that God is present with us in this place, and we're excited about the ministry that we are doing here at Unity Presbyterian Church. I hope that you'll come and join us on Wednesday night for our Wednesday worship live on the lawn, in person, an opportunity to be gathered outside for worship this coming Wednesday, which is October the 14th at 6.30 p.m. That'll also be a special day for us as we celebrate the ministry of Albert White as our sexton as he approaches retirement after 36 years of serving the Lord here in this place. There'll be a special time as a part of that service on Wednesday. I hope you'll come and be a part of recognizing and celebrating Albert's ministry among us. The season of Advent is quickly approaching, and as is often the custom here at Unity Presbyterian Church, I want to invite you to be a part of helping to write a daily Advent devotion for us. There's information in the announcement page, which you can find on the church website. You can also email Catherine McGregor. Uh, those um, announcements and opportunities for being a part of that Advent devotional are due on November the 1st. So we do need you to sign up, pick a scripture, pick a day, as we together this year will be exploring finding our place at the manger. I also want to um, invite you to come as children and youth to our next Super Sunday. That's a day of outdoor activities here at the church. Uh, you have to sign up for those as well. Our next Super Sunday will be on Sunday, October the 25th. So go ahead and get your signups in for that to be a part of that special day as our children and youth continue their exciting programming together this fall. Also, our second block of adult faith formation uh, opportunities and classes will be kicking off on October the 25th as well. So watch for more information about that too. We look forward to serving the Lord together and we look forward to this service of worship that we might turn our hearts and minds to God in praise. Let us prepare now as we have lit the candles here in the sanctuary that we might worship the Lord. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Please join me in our responsive call to worship. Come, all who hunger for good news. We thirst for words of hope and healing. Come from rural roads and city street. We gather at the King's invitation. Come, join the celebration. Let us worship the Lord. Sure. 
As we lift our voices in praise to God, in joyful singing, we also recognize the many ways in which we fall short, the many ways in which we are not the people God has created us to be, either as individuals or together as the people of God. And yet the proof of God's amazing love for us is this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Therefore, with faith and confidence, we approach the throne of grace to receive help in this and every time of need. Let us come before the Lord, confessing our sins, first together and then in silence. Extravagant God, you invite us to a feast for all peoples, and yet we fail to come. We are too distracted by the demands of our life to consider an invitation to joy and celebration with you. We turn our back on the goodness you offer and fail to share your good news with those in need. Forgive us, O God. Beckon us again, we pray, that we may respond with gratitude and praise. In your mercy, fill us with your spirit so that our joy overflows no matter what circumstances surround us. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn only Christ? And Christ died for us, Christ rose for us, Christ reigns in power for us, and Christ prays for us. If we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. Therefore, consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. It is now the time in our service to spend a few moments together, particularly with our youngest friends, the children of the church, and just invite you to draw near so that we might have this special time together. This morning in worship, we're talking about a particular thing called joy. Joy, it's, um, it's more than being happy. It's more than uh, feeling well. It's, uh, it's really something that wells up from inside us, something that, you know, comes like when we sing, something that comes from knowing God's presence with us always. And there's a song that, that I always loved, especially when I was your age, that reminds me of this, this great joy. It goes, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Now maybe you know that song, and if not, I bet, I bet you could sing it with me. And there's something that um, I'd love for us to do. I tried to sing this song one time, and every time I said the word rejoiced, I turned around. And, you know, you say it so many times that I just got dizzy. I felt like I was going to fall down, so I don't want to do that with us today. But maybe every time we say the word rejoice, we can wave our hands like this to remind us of this great joy that comes from inside us, that reminds us of how much God loves us. So will you sing that with me? You can get your moms and dads maybe to sing with you too. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. 
Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. That's a lot of waving hands, isn't it? So what a, a wonderful gift to remind us of how much God loves us and how much joy is a part of our life together in the church. So let's pray together. I'll start and pray a little bit, and you can just repeat after me. Dear God, we thank you for the joy of Jesus and for your presence with us always. Help us to sing and to rejoice always. Amen. Thank you all so much for being with me this morning, and we'll look forward to seeing you very soon. God bless you. Our first reading is Isaiah 25, 1 through 9. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The foreigner's palace is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a stronghold to the poor, a stronghold to the needy in his distress, a shelter from the storm and a shade from the heat. For the breath of the ruthless is like a storm against a wall, like heat in a dry place. You subdue the noise of the foreigners as heat by the shade of a cloud. So the song of the ruthless is put down. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine, well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation.
Our second reading for today comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. Now, the church that Paul founded in Philippi was the first church he established on European soil. He maintained a close relationship with these Christians in the years that followed. Life as a Christian in Philippi, though, was not always easy, as it appears that the church either suffered or anticipated persecution just before Paul wrote them this letter. The letter was to be carried by Ephroditus, who had been sent by the Philippian church to visit Paul in prison, bringing him gifts from the church. As his visitor had been seriously ill during his visit, Paul takes the opportunity to both thank the church for their gifts and to reflect on life's difficulties in light of the good news of the gospel. Our text for today comes from the final chapter of the letter as Paul begins to sum up his advice and his direction for these beloved people. So let us hear this word of God. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth, meditations of all our hearts, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The year 2020 has been one we will never forget. For example, do you remember in January the Australian bushfires that blanketed that country and killed an estimated 500 million to a billion animals? The drone strike that put the United States on the brink of war with Iran at the same time as the president's impeachment trial started in the Senate. Throughout this year, around the world, there have been volcanoes, earthquakes, severe flooding, additional wildfires, and hurricanes causing massive destruction and death. There was a swarm of locusts that descended upon East Africa. Murder hornets appeared in the United States. We suffered the death of retired, retired NBA superstar Kobe Bryant, Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, among so many others of note. We saw the explo explo explosion of improperly stored ammonium nitrate in Beirut, destroying blocks of the city. A police officer knelt on the neck of George Floyd for almost eight minutes, including almost two minutes after he had stopped breathing. The resulting peaceful protests and violent clashes have illustrated how divided we are as a nation over issues of race and justice. The United States Congress remains severely dysfunctional. The election campaign has been full of negative ads. Last week, we witnessed a presidential debate called the worst presidential debate in history. And I've not even yet mentioned the pandemic. Do you remember the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic when we thought that staying at home for two weeks would be enough to get everything back to normal? Now there have been more than 7 million cases of the virus just in the United States alone, more than 200,000 deaths, and the economy came to a screeching halt with long-lasting effects. The president himself was in the hospital last weekend as he and several others in the White House have contracted the virus. Those are just some of the national, the international headlines. What about closer to home? You know those stories better than I do. 
And so this morning, in the midst of all that depressing news of this year, we turn to the words of Scripture for comfort, for strength, and for hope. And today we hear words written by a man in prison who has watched a visitor suffer through an illness that nearly took his life. They're recorded in a letter addressed to a fledgling church under threat of persecution. Seems like an odd place to turn. And yet what do those words say? Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Rejoice? Always? No wonder Paul has to say it again. He can't be serious. How can we rejoice like Paul commands in a world such as this? Orthodox theologian Alexander Schmemann poses the question in this way, how can one be joyful when so many people suffer? When so many things are to be done, how can one indulge in festivals and celebrations when people expect from us serious answers to their problems? Christians have come to believe this, he says, or have rather ceased to believe that joy has something to do with precisely the serious problems of life itself and may even be the Christian answer to them. Can joy really be the Christian answer to life's serious problems? Well, if so, then we must be careful to distinguish the joy of which we speak from two of its common imposters, happiness and pleasure. For happiness is an emotional response, pleasure is a physical response, but both of them are dependent upon outward circumstances. If our circumstances are pleasant, our needs are met, we get the recognition we think we deserve, and we have the approval of our friends, then we're generally happy with our lives. Pleasure works the same way. If we're not hungry and thirsty, or if we're not hot or exhausted or in pain, then we experience pleasure. And even if, even if we do have some pain or loss of function in our body, enough medicine cures all ills so that we might know pleasure again. Thus, it would be foolish for Paul to say, don't worry, be happy, when his circumstances indicate anything but happiness and pleasure. And yet he can say, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. For his preacher and teacher, Barbara Brown Taylor, has written, the only condition for joy is the presence of God. Joy happens when God is present and people know it, which means that it can erupt in a depressed economy, in the middle of a war, or in an intensive care waiting room. Yes, the God who is present with us in this despairing world is not just there in the rare moments of happiness and pleasure. No, the God who is present with us was born not in a palace, but in a stable, because there was no room for him in the inn. The Christ who is present with us was not accustomed to a warm bed in the evening, but said, foxes have holes, birds have, of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. The Lord who is present with us triumphed, not in a military victory, but on a cross in an empty tomb. Indeed, in the Orthodox liturgy, there is even a phrase that proclaims, for through the cross, joy came into the whole world. Such an odd phrase for us today, that joy might come into the world through a cross. But it is precisely through the cross that Christ stands with us in the midst of the suffering, the trials, and the tribulations of life. Christ is the shoulder upon which we weep in our darkest moments. And yet there is more. 
Through the cross, Christ also gathers up all of humanity in himself, sufferings, trials, tribulations, everything else, and carries them to God. All that we are, Christ has been. And so as we are united with him in his death, so shall we be united with him in his resurrection. As 20th century theologian Karl Barth writes, the power of which we speak, the power of this transition is light. It is light from the darkness of the cross of Jesus Christ into the darkness of our existence. It brings about this definite illumination, and in doing so, even in all the sadness which might otherwise engulf us, it affects a clear and invincible joyfulness. Yes, through the cross, we may know a joy that does not seek to avoid or escape despair and suffering. Through the cross, we may know that even in the midst of the darkest night, the light still shines. And God's loving care assures us that all will be well. Through the cross, we may know a joy that acknowledges the pain and the difficulty of life, but transforms them through faith, hope, and love. Because when God shows up, even in the most unlikely place, there is joy. One who knew Christ's presence in this way was my cousin, Christy Rush. Christy recorded her journey with a recurrence of breast cancer that had spread to her bones through a long series of blog posts. And in several blog entries, Christy wrote about having to gear up to go into the treatment center for checkups. As much as she was grateful for its existence, at the same time, she despised it. Everyone there was somehow and in some way affected by cancer. You look around at people whose bodies had been bombarded by a dreadful disease and the treatments they were receiving to battle it. She often said to herself, I hate this place. It was no different one day, fairly early in her journey, when she and her husband arrived at the the treatment center for a new plan of treatment. But she wrote, before we left, as I was waiting for the elevator to go down into the lobby, I looked up and met the glance of a sweet looking older woman. Her face broke into a soft smile. I didn't get it at first. Why is she smiling at me? It took me a second to realize that her smile came as a response to the smile that was on my face. And as surprising as it sounds, that changed something within me. She continued, in that instant, I realized that this place I say that I hate has become a new place God has sent me. It's a new mission field, one that I don't want, one that I never ask for, one that I hope against all hope I won't be stationed in for a long period of time because I won't need it anymore. But I realize that I am placed here for such a time as this. As much as I hate Roswell for what it represents, in that instant I learned to see it from God's perspective. It's a place, just like any other place, where the hope of Christ needs to be shared. I got a clear glimpse that this isn't an opportunity to be wasted, she said. It isn't a place to go in and do everything you can to avoid really looking around because the images of sick people are hard to see. It isn't time to pretend that you're not like the sick people you see. As hard as it is to go there, God reminded me today that he is present in that place. And when God is present, hope comes. Christy died on March the 17th of 2015. She was 42 years old. 
She touched so many people with her life and her witness. Words that seem to speak so powerfully to this moment in which we find ourselves this year. One of her favorite phrases was that she was just a girl with a really big God. And when that really big God shows up, hope comes. Joy is there. My friends, suffering, pain, and death, all that we despise and despair in this year of 2020 will not have the final word. For joy came into the whole world through a cross. This is good news of great joy. So let us rejoice always in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh God, fill us with your Spirit. Fill us with Christ, who knew our suffering, who knew our pain and trials and tribulations, and gathered them up so that through a cross, joy might come to the whole world. Fill us with joy so that it might overflow from us into the lives of others, that we might see and experience and know your presence with us always. For when you show up and we notice, joy is there. We pray these things in the name of our crucified and yet risen Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. My friends, in response to hearing the word read and proclaimed, we do declare what it is that we believe. Today we do so using words from the Westminster Shorter Catechism, questions one and two. What is the chief end of human beings? Our chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy God forever. What rule hath God given to direct us how we may glorify and enjoy God? The Word of God, which is contained in the Scriptures of the Old and New Testaments, are the only rule to direct us how we may joy glorify and enjoy God. Let us join our hearts and minds in prayer. O God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, you have told us not to worry, but to put our trust in you, bringing everything to you in prayer. We rejoice that you are our God. We exalt you and praise your holy name, for you have done wonderful things. Hear now our prayers for the world and for your people. Creating God, you created the world and everything in it and called it good. Restore among all people a love of the earth you entrusted to our care. Help us put an end to ravishing its land, air, and waters, and give us respect for all your creatures, that living in harmony with everything you have made, your whole creation may resound in an anthem of praise to your glorious name. Loving God, whom we cannot love unless we love our neighbors, remove hate and prejudice from us and from all people. Renew our nation in the ways of justice and peace. Guide those who make and administer our laws to build a society based on trust and respect. Give all citizens a new vision of a life of harmony so that your children may be reconciled with those we fear, resent, or threaten and live together in your peace. Sustaining God, have mercy on those among us who need your healing touch. Make the sick whole, give hope to the dying, 
comfort those who mourn, uphold all who suffer in body or mind, not only those we know and love, but also those known only to you, that they may all know the peace and joy of your supporting love. Nourishing God, strengthen this congregation in its work and worship. Fill our hearts with your self-giving love, that our voices may speak your praise, and our lives may conform to the image of your Son. Feed us with your word and sacraments, that we may faithfully minister in your name and witness to your love and grace for all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We do have the great joy today of celebrating uh, the ways in which God continues to allow our congregation to grow in both faith and in membership, as we recognize the newest members of Unity Presbyterian Church, who were received into the membership of this church by the session at its stated meeting on September the 28th. They come to us as members of the One Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, into which they were baptized and by which they have been nurtured. We are one with each other, sisters and brothers in the family of God. So we rejoice in the gifts that they bring to us. Stephanie and Michael Benatti and their daughter Harper, they've joined by reaffirmation of faith. Jennifer and Danny Brindisi, who've joined by letter of transfer from North Creek Presbyterian Church in Mill Creek, Washington, with their four daughters, Eleanor, Layla, Nora, and Marin. Jack and Joan DeBryan, who have become affiliate members of Unity Presbyterian Church, with their active membership remaining at White Memorial Presbyterian Church in Raleigh, North Carolina. Karen Jones, who has joined by letter of transfer from First Presbyterian Church in York, South Carolina. Bonnie and Tom Norton, who've joined by reaffirmation of faith. Nina Sue Putz, who has been joining by reaffirmation of faith. She goes by Sue. The Rich family, Sarah, Will, Sam, and Becca, who have joined by letter of transfer from Reed Memorial Presbyterian Church in Augusta, Georgia. And Richard, Robbie, and Judy Robinson, who have joined by letter of transfer from Emanuel United Methodist Church in Huntington Town, Maryland. Let us pray. Holy God, we praise you for calling us to be a servant people and for gathering us into the body of Christ. We thank you for choosing to add to our number new brothers and sisters in faith. Together may we live in your spirit and so love one another, that we may have the mind of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom we give honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. It is a little unusual to receive new members in this way. There's not an opportunity right now for you to extend the right hand of fellowship to speak to them in the narthex, but I do hope that you will find their contact information in the ACS system or by calling the church office so that you might extend your own warm word of welcome to these, our newest brothers and sisters in Christ. My friends, as we celebrate with our new members, as we rejoice in the many gifts that God has given us, we do respond in gratitude and joy and praise. I want to say thank you for the many ways in which you continue to support the ministry of Unity Presbyterian Church as we seek to be faithful to God in these challenging and yet times of new and amazing opportunity. Thank you for sending in your gifts. Thank you for uh, going online to the website, to that Give Now button. There's also a QR code that I discovered on the announcement page each week that takes you directly to that online giving. This is an opportunity for you to say thanks to God, to support the ongoing work and ministry that continues in such amazing ways 
here in our congregation. And we thank you for your support and most of all, for your prayers. Let us celebrate and take time to give thanks to God for these gifts that you are giving and continue to give in the days to come. We give you thanks, eternal God, for your many gifts to us, for the ways in which you have invited us to respond and to join in the joyful ministry here at Unity Presbyterian Church. Help us to be your people. Bless the gifts that we give, that they might be used for your work in this place and throughout the world as we see and participate in the inbreaking of your kingdom and the transformation of our lives and lives everywhere. We give you thanks and praise for your greatest gift of all, Jesus Christ, for it is in his name that we pray. Amen. My friends, as our service of worship concludes, may our lives of worship and service begin anew. Know that in the midst of despair and darkness, a light still shines. Christ is present with us. Christ keeps showing up. And when Christ keeps showing up, there is joy. So may we rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice, for the Lord is near. Share this good news, news that this world desperately needs to hear. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.